everyone, it's Jack. And today, I'm gonna take a look at Sparky Linux. Sparky 6.6 .6 is now out and available and looks pretty exciting. This is the sixth update of Sparky 6. And this is a quarterly updated point release of Sparky 6 called Potolo, I think is how they pronounce it, of the stable line. Sparky Linux is something I took a look at a while back and I really liked it. And so one of the new things in Sparky Linux that they kind of emphasized, at least out on DistroWatch, was that Sparky Linux now has persistency. So what that means actually in English, <laughs> persistence means that uh, if you have a live version and you plug it in and you run it strictly off your USB stick, once you shut it down or you restart your computer, anything you might have done in that environment will be gone. So if you like downloaded some pictures or whatever, and then restarted your computer, then all that would be gone because everything on there is temporary. So with persistence, that means that you can restart your computer and it'll save. So what it does is it kind of sets aside some space on your USB drive. That way you can kind of have like your own little portable operating system that you can just carry around with you and you have some space available on your USB drive to work with and to save things. And it'll also save your settings too. So enough of my babbling. I just want to take a look at this. So they have a lot of details here. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but this is a Debian based distro and it's based on Debian stable, which is currently 11. So I'm going to click on the download tab here and then click past the little ad there, but the ads support the site. So be sure to click on some. <laughs> and so here we got two versions. We got the stable and the semi rolling. And of course the stable is the new release. So this is the new ISO that we're talking about. I'm just going to click on stable here. And then as you can see, we got our download images and I'm just going to select one of these. I kind of like the OSDN here, but you got a lot of choices, SourceForge, BitTorrent and so forth. So just going to click on that. Going to download this guy and I'll be right back. Okay. And here we are. We're at our boot screen and we got Sparky 6.6 .6 XFCE 64 bit loaded in. We'll just kind of boot in and see how it looks. And so here's our Sparky Linux splash screen. And I like that already. Very cool. I remember Sparky Linux really being kind of like one of the cool kids on the block. This is something I think I'm going to like already just from memory. So anyways, this is going to take just a second to load in because we do have a lot of live information that's kind of propagating. And then we should be seeing a login screen. Well, actually, I think we're just going to go directly to the desktop. And it should be here any second now. Or any minute. Any day. And here we got it coming in. So there's our desktop propagating. Got our wired connection established. And now we ought to be seeing a background. And here's our welcome screen. And then the background. All right, there we go. So cool. And that's a nice looking background, actually. And everything looks quite XFC-ish like. Sparky Linux 6. And I think that's Po-Tolo, I guess. Or Po-Tolo. Not sure which. I'll go with Po. Po-Tolo. So that's an interesting name. I didn't actually look to see if there was some meaning to that on the website. But uh, kind of cool. It's kind of sticks with you. So it looks like we got our standard XFCE layout here with the whisker venue and then some extra info on the desktop right off the bat, which is nice. And even the Sparky online install guide, very cool. And a nice welcome center here. So I'm just going to get right down to it. I'm going to close that and just open up the Sparky installer. So in our installer here, we got our American English here by default. I'm going to hit next and then we're good there with the time zone. So that's close enough for me. And then we have US default and then our choices to install alongside replace a partition, erase or manual partition. 
And by the way, this is the Calamaries installer, always easy to use, nice. And I'm going to go with Erase Disk because there's nothing on the disk that I need to keep, nothing important, nothing that needs backed up. So I'm just going to hit that. And then here, I'm going to just put in my silly username, Toadwick, and then a password. And then again, and by default, it's set to log in automatically without asking for the password, which is cool. I'm good with that. Uh, and same password with the admin account. I'm good with that too. But I think I'm going to uncheck the login automatically just so we can kind of see the login screen for the sake of the look. And now I just hit install and it should kind of do its thing. And this should only take a few minutes, maybe five minutes or so, give or take. And I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, we are complete. So I'm just going to click the little restart now box there and then done. And we'll do our restart and see how it came out. Okay, and now the big restart. We're at our screen here and it looks like we're loading... Linux kernel 5.10, which is consistent with a stable Debian. And if everything went okay, there's our cool splash screen, which I always like that one. Very sharp. Now we should be seeing our login screen if everything went all right. And there it is. Cool. So I'm just going to log in here. Looks like I got to manually enter in my username. And then our password. And wrong password. Okay. And wrong password again. What did I do? Type it wrong when I installed? Hmm. <laughs> Strange. Let's try a lowercase t. There we go. Okay, wow, that, that is odd. Never saw that before. Um, so I know you do have to have a lowercase characters when you're using a username, but typically at the greeter there, uh, it kind of compensates for you and for that first uppercase. So that one caught me a little bit off guard. <laughs> All right, so we'll remember that in the future if I have to do a reboot. So here we got our welcome screen like what we saw in the live version. We got our homepage, forums, wiki, git repo, donate, app center, upgrade, about system info, and backup. So we got these utilities here to kind of make things easier. The homepage, of course, will take you out. And then I also see we got updates available. And I might as well just let that run in the background since I'm kind of just in the welcome screen for now anyway. And so we'll let that do its system upgrade. And being that this is a new update here, 6.6, .6, there's probably not a whole lot that it's really got to grab. But it's showing about 21.3 megabytes of archives, so not very much at all. I'm just going to go with upgrade, and that won't take long at all. Kind of do its thing right there, and I won't even have to let it run in the background that much. So now it's going to do a refresh on the package list. And it's up to date. So there we go. Easy peasy. I had a feeling that was going to be very simple being that it's new here. And then here we got our whisker menu launcher. Nice. And we'll just come right back to that here on the welcome center. This is Pretty much the right hand side here has the shortcuts to your apps and so forth, like the App Center. And we just did the upgrade, so I won't have to click that. And then about will just kind of give us a quick overview of what we got here. So it shows that we're running the new version 6.6, .6, codename Potolo. And then it goes on to give us our time zone and processor type and so forth. Kernel 5.10.0-21. About six gigs of RAM assigned to this and XFWM window manager. So then if we hit home again, uh, not home. 
<laughs> I thought that was going to take me back to the welcome screen, the home screen there, but it actually took me out to the home page website there. Ah, there we go. So I guess all I had to do was close that window and it would have brought me back here. So my bad there. And then you got your backup utility if you want to back up your settings and so forth. And then we got our app center. And if I just log into the app center, this should open up uh, our Aptus app center. And I remember Aptus from way back when I did the last look at Sparky Linux. And Aptus is really quite cool. Here we got everything just kind of sorted by categories. We got accessories and desktops, games, multimedia. So if you actually wanted to change your desktop, you could just kind of click that. We got all kinds of stuff to choose from. Awesome, BSWM, Budgie, CDE, Cinnamon, Draco, Enlightenment, Flexbox. Wow, just tons. <laughs> tons of stuff to choose from. Even UK UI. Wow. Impressive. Sugar, open box, and of course, XFCE, KDE Plasma, Enlightenment. So to me, that's pretty impressive. And this really makes installing another desktop easy. And so if you're one of those that like to go out and distro hop a lot, maybe next time, instead of distro hopping, you could just choose one of these desktops and you're going to feel like you're in a whole new apartment already. So... Yeah, nice little option there. And then here's our Aptus section here where you can safely upgrade your system, do a full system upgrade, search from the repository, install package from a local drive. So you have all these nice little utilities here that you can perform different functions without having to use the terminal. Or you can get to the terminal right from here if you want to use it. And then here we have our search function. So if we go in here, we can just type something in here like Inkscape. And then it'll look for it and there it is right here. And I'll just hit Inkscape and just kind of see how it looks when you want to install something. So here it's showing our Aptus App Center and it's showing Inkscape version 1.0.0. 2-4, which is a little bit on the ancient side, but that's to be expected in the stable release. Now, if I remember right, if you go with the Sparky rolling instead of the stable, then you're going to have newer packages in there. And I think that one has 1.2 to the newer version, if I remember correctly. But I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's it's quite a bit newer because you got the newer repos, like uh, I think it's the unstable or the testing. I don't recall off the top of my head, but it's one of those. But if you like stability above and beyond the other stuff, like having the latest and greatest version, then you can just simply do the install here. Uh, another alternative is to install something like Flatpak or Snaps, and then you could get the latest and greatest that way or my favorite method but distro box where you can just actually do a virtual arch install and then just access the aur and get whatever you want and then link it right into your desktop that's something i talked about in a previous video so that package successfully installed. I'm just going to exit out of the Aptis Center here. And I'm just going to exit out of the Aptis here. Because I think we kind of covered everything there. And it's also here on our favorites. And as you can see, the whisker menu here is set up where we have our items on the left side and our categories on the right. And then to see what's in the categories, you just click on one of the categories like graphics, internet, and so forth. My personal taste, I like this setup a little bit different. So I'm just going to go back down here on our icon for our menu, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to select properties. And then here under the whisker menu properties, we got appearance, and I like them showing up as icons. And another thing I like to do is I like to position the categories next to the panel button. 
So I'm going to select that. And when I do that, if we come back down here, we can now see that our categories are on the left side and our applications are on the right side. And now they're in icon format. And if I stretch this out just a little bit by just kind of grabbing the edge here, maybe like the corner, I can pull that out and actually make it three in each row instead of two. So I like that a little better. Um, the only other thing I would change here is I like those to change when I hover over the categories. So I'm going to activate that behavior as well. And that's under the behavior tab. So if I come over here and then I select switch categories by hovering, then that's going to fix that. So now I can close that when I come over here. Now when I hover over these categories, they all change automatically. And that's my personal taste. And I think I'll even just kind of make that a little bit taller because after you install some more apps, you might get some other categories down here like other or programming or something like that. So that'll make room, but you can stretch this menu anytime you want. You can make it as tall or as wide as you wish and it will remember that setting. So that's one thing I really like about the whisker menu is it's really easy to configure. And since we're in the whisker menu, here's a shortcut to get to your system settings. And if we pop this open real quick, we can kind of see our settings. And one thing I like to do when I first install a system is I like to go into the appearance. And when we go in here, I can select a dark theme and let's see what we got by default. So we got our weighted dark and then we have our Sparky five and six. And if I scroll down, they, we got default XFCE themes in there as well. So it looks like our dark theme that's installed here is the Adwaita Dark. So I'm going to click that. And now we got our dark theme all in place. And we even got our bar up here also. Our window decoration bar up here also changed. So nice. And then our icons, by default, we're using the tele icon. So I want to switch that to the Teledark because if we were going to open up our file manager here, Thunar, and that's kind of what I expected to see, a light bar up here on our window. So you can see that is light theme still. So that's got to be something that's themed separately if you want to have that dark as well to match. But anyways, as you can see over here, these icons are kind of blending in a little bit with a dark background. So if we select Tele Dark, that will match it to the dark version of the icons and now they stand out better. So that's one thing you want to do when you change your style to dark is you want to make sure your icon style is also denoted as a dark. So now Tele Dark will just kind of match better. So now how do we change our window decoration up here? Personally, I think it, it looks okay with the light, but if you want to have it dark as well to match the dark theme, what we want to do is back in our settings here, we want to select the window manager. So we go into window manager here, and then we can see our themes for our different top bars. And you can see that the Sparky 6 is still there. So if we want to match that, I can scroll up, and I think it was a way to dark. And so I can go in here and select something else. And I'm not seeing the way to dark in there, actually. Fascinating. But you can go here and you can select all kinds of other looks here for your window decoration. And a lot of these kind of have that classic old style. <laughs> here we got default. So I think default would work. Actually, that's probably pulling something uh, from the Adwaita dark automatically. So we'll go with default. That's, you can't go wrong with that. So there we go. That's uh, our window manager. So if I click all settings back here, then that kind of takes care of that. And also we got our about me. So if we want to give ourselves a icon, we can click this guy and we could browse and select a picture and then put it on there. However, 
I don't have any pictures on this. So there's no default pictures here either by default. So we'll just kind of leave that with its default placeholder. So that's some of our settings there. And I just like to jump out to our panel settings real quick. If we jump in here in our panel control, we have, this is our XFCE. And if you've seen other XFCE videos and this all looks pretty familiar, I'm sure. Here we can unlock our panel if you want to move that. Some people like that up on top. So you can just slide it up there just by grabbing the handles on either end of the bar here or the panel and then click it again and that'll remove the panels so nobody can mess with them and then here under appearance we have our dark mode so if you like a light mode but you like a dark panel then here you can select your dark mode and then that'll make your panel dark and still keep your file manager and maybe other applications with a light background which is always a nice feature. And it's showing here that compositing is currently disabled. Wow. I didn't even realize that. So I'm going to hit configure here. And this opens up our window manager tweaks. I'm going to select the compositor tab. And I'm going to select enable display compositing. And since we got that open, one thing I like to do in this compositing setting is scroll down and then opacity of windows during move which is right here. I like to back that off to right around 90% or so. Just kind of eyeball it there. And then when I move my window, it makes it a little bit opaque. A little less opaque. A little more transparent. Maybe I'll back that off a little bit more. And then we got our, a nice little transparency there during the move. And to me, that's just kind of a nice little touch. <laughs> makes it look cool so there we go we got that and then under items I get a we have a show desktop here which is over here on this side and so if you want to move that I'm good with it there but you know a lot of people like it all the way at the end and I'm actually more comfortable with it there too a couple things you can do you can either unlock your panel here and then right click and move actually you might be able to move that without unlocking it and then just drag it down here with your mouse. And I don't have any button clicked right now. And then I'll just left click and put it in place. And then that'll move it down to the end. And then, of course, the other way you can do that is you can use your arrow buttons and move your item just by clicking the arrows up and down. And then you're all good. And, of course, you can add more items on here. So you could go in here and just find something like a weather widget or something pop it in here and of course xfce in my opinion has the best weather widget out of all the desktops and now we have our weather update here and i'm just going to right click on this guy select move and maybe slide that over there on this end and then it's all set and the other thing I forgot to mention, if you want to display the temperature along with a little graphic down there, right now it's showing the clouds for a cloudy day. But if you also want to show the temperature, you can just go into your properties by right clicking on that. And then over here under the scroll box tab, just select this little drop down, select temperature or any of these other choices. You can add them in as well. But I like just displaying the temperature myself. And once you select that, then click the Add button. And now you'll see that the temperature has appeared down there right next to the little cloud. So that's how that works. And then we can just hit Close. And we got our little widget, cool and groovy. And then, of course, our desktop settings. So here we can go in here and look at our wallpaper. And a lot of nice looking wallpaper, it looks like. Great landscapes. Cool. So these are always cool and of course i can click my show desktop here and kind of see that in the back see the background a little better and that one's kind of cool i like that it's got the moon in the background i think i could go with that actually 
And I'm running a dark theme, but I like that. Even with a dark theme, sometimes you don't always need a light background for a dark theme. Sometimes the right combination of darkness and light in your background works with a dark theme. And that's something I like too. That is quite cool, actually. I think I'm going to keep that one. And then there's one with a butterfly. But I'm thinking this one is kind of going to be the winner here. Nice. Looks great. So I'm going to go with that. And then, of course, we got our menu and icon settings here for your desktop as well. And the icon settings is something where you can show by default, for example, we have our home file system trash and removable devices. They're all checked by default, which is shown over here on the left hand side. And so if, if I didn't want some of these showing up, like let's say I wanted to get rid of the file system, uncheck it here and it'll disappear on this side and it'll be gone. However, I like having everything on there. So I'm going to just do that. If you like a single click to open up your items here on the desktop, you can check this and then the item will open up just from a single click instead of a double click. So that's where you can change that. And speaking of that, you can also do that in Thunar in your file manager. So if we go down here and we go into edit and then preferences, we can do the same thing under behavior. And then here it says double click to activate items, which is the default. But if you like a single click, you're kind of maybe used to KDE's default single click thing, then you can come up here and activate the single click. And then you'll have your single click act capabilities. But I like double click personally, so I'm going to stick with that. And then we have our advanced settings, our side pane, and our display. Our format is today format for any new files that are created today, but it doesn't give you a time. Personally, I like having the time there when I create something today and two hours from now, I want to know when I created it. It's handy. So I always change that to today at and then the time. So that's another thing I like to do. Here, if you want to show thumbnails on your external drives, then you can change from local files only to always and then it'll show thumbnails everywhere. Of course, you're going to be caching more caching files. So if you're tight on space, then you probably don't want to have that. Otherwise, just click always and then you can see the little icons. And it's not going to make any difference anyways, unless you have a drive with 100,000 pictures on it, I suppose. <laughs> OK, so that's our file manager preferences. and. Just kind of out of curiosity, under the side pane, you can see our options here are shortcut and tree. So I believe that being the stable version here and everything, we are running XFCE 4.16. Just recently, 4.18 came out. And the reason I can tell the difference is because here in Thunar, there's no option to show picture previews, which would show up down here, or you could open up a side pane window preview and have a side pane over here on the right showing a bigger preview of the pictures. So that's kind of a new feature in 4.18. And so by not seeing it here, that tells me right off the bat that we're at 4.16, which is what I would expect out of a stable version. So that is right on par with my expectations. And that is a good thing when you need stability. And then, of course, we got the usual settings over here. And under keyboard, I always like to make sure that restore numlock state on startup is checked. So I'm going to check that. That's what I would do if this was my new daily driver, because I use my numlock a lot. <laughs> and then on the mouse, if you're a lefty, you can click left handed here and that'll change it. And of course, you can select your acceleration and then your double click settings and all that, which default is normally just fine. And then theme, you can go in here and set different cursors if you like having different cursors. 
So here we have the Edweda, and we could actually increase our cursor size. So I could crank that up to like maybe 22 or something. <laughs> and then that'll kind of get bigger somewhere. Like, I don't see a huge difference, but 22 must not be that big a deal. So that kind of covers that. And then down here, let's just kind of take a look at our default installed apps what we have in here so far so we have our accessories which are all quite standard our image viewer calculator which is one of my favorite calculators and then we got task manager of course so we can open that up and just kind of see our processes running and then back down here in our menu we got a development category which doesn't have anything in it right now except an icon browser. And then here we have our Inkscape, Image Magic, Image Viewer, Document Scanner, LibreOffice Draw, and then our internet apps here. We're running Firefox ESR, which is the extended support release, and transmission for torrents. Even has a VPN client and Thunderbird email client. So if you like email clients, you're all set. And then under multimedia, we got radio station. That's a really nice app. That's a app that runs down in your system tray and you can listen to radio stations. Very nice app. That's one thing I really like in Sparky. And I think it's kind of customized for Sparky, if I remember right. Then we have VL VLC installed by default. So we got our codex taken care of, which is nice. And vocal screen, which is a nice screen recorder. And then, of course, under Office, we got our LibreOffice suite all installed. Atrial Document Viewer for PDF files. And then Settings, we got all our typical XFCE settings in here. These are all the things that were in our Settings menu and more, including a USB management there for your USB drives. We got Synaptic Package Manager, which is another package manager, a GUI version of the apt that you would run in your console. Window Manager Tweaks, which is what we were in earlier. And then of course our system settings. So here we got our greeting settings, our Aptus App Center where we were before. About, we've been in there live USB creator persistence. So again, we could go ahead and make our live USB creator persistence here. And I have to wonder if that would even actually make a, a copy of your current configuration. That I'm not sure, but I'm kind of suspect that it would possibly. Uh, again, I don't have any USB keys on this particular machine here, it won't actually work because it's equivalent to not having a USB port on this virtual machine. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And then we got time shift here so we can back up our configuration. If we want to have restore points, that way if something goes wrong after you installed something and it screwed things up, you can restore your restore point with time shift and then you're good to go. You're back to where you were. And for my two cents, I think Sparky Linux, you still got it. Wow. Sparky is something that I actually ran as a daily driver for a while just for fun. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing it permanently because I needed Arch at the time to just kind of have my access to all the stuff out on the AUR, but I really enjoyed my time with Sparky Linux. And I would actually run this on other computers that I didn't need to use full time and have access to AUR. Of course, I could use DistroBox anyway. And I think the Sparky Linux rolling with something like DistroBox, assuming you needed access to the AUR or wanted it, uh, would be a great combination. In fact, I've done that with MX Linux and it works great. And MX 
uses testing repos and so forth, also Debian based, and it works beautiful with that. So I would assume it would work beautiful with Sparky as well. Even though I've only done a quick overview here of Sparky and I've been in here for maybe 45 minutes or so, I could safely tell you that I would absolutely use Sparky and recommend it to other people. I would install it on other people's computers as well and feel very good about it because I have some experience with Sparky Linux and I know from firsthand of experience how stable and how good a quality system that Sparky Linux is. So this is definitely something that's on my top favorite list. And I think 6.6 .6 is looking great. And the fact that they got that persistence feature in there now is really huge. And I think in the future, I'm going to test that a little bit too and just kind of get a feel for that persistence on its own and kind of play with that a little bit because to me that is probably the biggest deal I'm seeing here so far on this upgrade here of the 6.6 .6. and I consider that a real winner a great choice by the team so I'm gonna have to do it double thumbs up for Sparky Linux all right so Sparky well done and with that I hope this review was helpful and if it was never forget to hit that thumbs up and while you're at it, you might as well hit that subscribe button too. And then after you hit it, hit it again just to double subscribe. And as always, I really appreciate you watching the video. And we'll see you next time.